Rachel, welcome at Krakow Film Festival. Thank you. Um, a quote from your film. I got a call from your girlfriend, Clara, and she said you broke your wrist and your pelvis. I thought you broke the only two things you knew how to use. This is how your film starts, and these harsh words are um, addressed at your dad. On the one hand, a brilliant flamenco guitarist. On the other hand, a crazy artist, five different relationships, five children. You're one of them. Um, was making the film kind of an excuse to get closer to your dad? Completely. Oh, yeah? Completely, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm making films, but in, in a sense, it was the first film that I started. It was, it was the third that I finished. And so when I went to film school and decided to finally go for making films, which I thought was sort of an illegitimate thing to do with one's life, but finally you know, went for it, I said, okay, well, I have a good story. And it's my father's story. Um, I'm 30 years old, and I'm just on the cusp between sort of permanent childhood and permanent adulthood, and I'm thinking, well, what do I do with this guy? And what do I do with him in my life? So yeah, making a film about him and about, I really thought it was going to be a, a film about him. You know, now we know that it's also a film about me. Mm. But um, yeah, it was an excuse. It was a, the ultimate excuse to, to, to figure out what to do with him. Did you figure it out? Like No. <laughs> I made a film. <laughs> so um, how does your relationship look like now? Today. When, when the film it's, is done? It's tricky. Um, I think you could say that in a sense, uh, the Renaissance, our best years, were the film years, making the film years, because we were both completely devoted to that, and um, and that there was no final outcome, so everything was possible. So the film, meaning the relationship, could end any way you know that you imagine. Now it's finite. Now there's a film. It only covers so much. It only tells so much. It only leads you to think or feel so many things. It, it leads you to think and feel a lot of things, but only so many. It's finite. It's closed. And in the 10 years of making the film, everything was open, everything was possible. So there's an adjustment to coming out of that era into, okay, now the film is done, now now we have to have a relationship. Um, before making this personal film, I've read that you were making um, politically involved pictures. And now suddenly, um, in this project, you become a contributor, and at the same time, you're the director. So have you actually, it was shot in 10 years' time as well, so have you learned anything about yourself as a person and yourself as a filmmaker? Um, with every film, you learn a lot about yourself as a person and as a filmmaker, because creating is probably the most painful thing you can do. It's the greatest privilege that anybody can have is to be allowed to create, and it's just a disaster each and every time. It's this awful roller coaster of you know falling in and out of love with what you're doing, and nobody made me do this, and who thought this was a good idea, and you, it basically feels to me, at least each time that you dug a hole for yourself and then you just have to spend the rest of the time figuring out how to get yourself out of the hole that you dug for yourself. Um, what was the protagonist's reaction to your film? The protagonist, all of them or my father? Um, the women, your mom, your, your father. Everybody had a different one. Everybody's still talking to me. All right, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, that was part of also the goal throughout. You know, you could say there's, the film is as much an act of, ex uh, of censorship as it is an act of exposing. Because it's your family, it's people you love, it's people that you want to maintain a relationship with afterwards. They're much more important than a movie, any movie. Rachel, thank you so much. Thank you. For this interview, for your film, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you.